So I'm going to ask you a series of questions about landmarks on the skull. In the description, I'm going to put a list of terms that I'm drawing from. So you might want to look at that first and see if you're familiar with at least most of the terms, because if you're not, this really won't be helpful for you. This is to help you um, see, can you pull the terms out of your head? Um, or do you need to work on that? So I'm going to ask a series of questions and then give you a second to think of the answer. So this hole under the eye socket, this hole would be called the infraorbital foramen. In the eye socket, this crack this crack would be the inferior orbital fissure. It's the inferior orbital fissure because the one on top is the superior orbital fissure. Then there's this hole. The name of that hole is the optic canal because it is where the optic nerve is going in to enter your eyeball. This bone This bone, more commonly called the cheekbone, is your zygomatic bone. And then if you look what would the name of this bone be? That is the lacrimal bone, and you have to pay close attention, but you can see there's a tiny little suture there, and a tiny little suture there, and one over here is making a little shape around the lacrimal bone. Next to the lacrimal bone, What bone is that? It's the maxilla bone. Coming down to the jaw, what would we call the corner of the jaw? The corner would be the mandibular angle. Now we're going to pop his whole jaw off. So we said the corner was the mandibular angle. This triangular shape, the triangular shape would be the coronoid process. Also, don't mind my dirty fingernails because I've been gardening and the dirt just will not come off no matter how much I wash. All right, so this is the coronoid process. It's coron because it's, um, coron means it's shaped like a triangle or a crown or a point. What would this be? 
that is the mandibular condyle. Or I've also heard, heard it called the condylar process. I think both are fine. Um, so it's the mandibular condyle because a condyle is always what? A condyle is always a rounded bump that's going to fit into another bone. So in this case, what bone is the mandibular condyle fitting into? It's fitting into the temporal bone. What is the place in the temporal bone called that the condyle is fitting into? It is the mandibular fossa. This bump here, what would that be? There's this bump and this stick. This is the mastoid process. This here is the styloid process. And whenever you see OID, OID means they're trying to say it looks like something. So a stylus means like a pen. So this little point they're saying styloid looks like a pen. Now if we flip this way, what is this bump? It's named for the bone that it is on. They are the occipital condyles. So the occipital condyles are the bumps that fit into the atlas. What is that hole? That hole sitting superiorly to the occipital condyles is the hypoglossal canal. Right. Now if we look at him from the back, what is that line? That line is the sagittal suture. This line is the lambdoid suture. Be very careful, it is lambdoid with a D, not lamboid with a B, lambdoid. So cracking open his skull. What do we call this? This whole scoop is the anterior cranial fossa. It is a fossa because a fossa is a bowl or a basin. Try to remember a foramen is a hole, a fossa is a bowl. So this is the anterior cranial fossa, which would make this the posterior cranial fossa. All right, so
What is that hole? It is the optic canal. This kind of looks like a manta ray to me. Um, and the optic canal is like the eyes of the manta ray. So this, what is this whole shape here? That whole thing is the cella tersica. But what if we were just asking about the center of the cella tersica? The divot in the middle. So the divot in the middle would be the hypophysial fossa. It is the hypophysial fossa because the pituitary gland sits inside of it. And another word for the pituitary gland is the hypophysis with a PH instead of a TH, like hypothesis, hypophysis. What is this hole? So with the holes, it's R-O-S, this is the O, so that is the foramen oval. What about this hole? So that is the carotid canal. You can always find the carotid canal because it is diagonally back from the foramen spinosum. So if you can find R-O-S, foramen spinosum, drop diagonally back, that's your carotid canal. Of all the things in the scope, people dislike the foramen the most. So if you're still having a lot of trouble with them, I have a video that's just about those. I will put the link in the description in case you want to check it out. Uh, for now, I think that's all I'm going to ask you. Have a great day. I hope you are feeling great about your knowledge about the skull. Have fun learning.